So we are going tow trucking. Um, we got a bit of a timeline on this one. The truck that's broke down has a trailer load of refrigerated food. And obviously refrigerated food has a time limit. So he's about three hours to the east of here. And the uh, problem is he needs to keep going east with that trailer load of food. But the company has a yard about a half hour to the north of me where they've got a spare truck sitting. So I'm gonna take the wrecker up there, go pick up the good truck, then head out to the east, meet up with the driver where he's broke down, swap the good truck for his bad one so he can continue on his way and then I'll tow the bad one back here to their yard. So uh, I wanna finish checking this thing over and then we're gonna get going. Okay, we're here at the customer's yard. We gotta find which one of all these trucks we're taking and then uh, and get it hooked up. Okay, I got sidetracked with all the, the hooking up stuff, but we got the truck hooked up here. Uh, we're rear towed on U-bolt forks and then got the axle strapped to the underreach. Safety chain's on. We've got the cab strapped down because those things like to push the cab up. So the whole cab strapped down. And we got straps holding the fairings in. We've got the steering wheel tied with both the seat belt as a safety. This is just a safety. This actual ratchet strap is what's holding it. This is just here in case that falls off for some reason. Uh, electrical tape, or sorry, duct tape wrapped on the mirror so the cover doesn't blow off. Same thing on these ones. Light bars on with carabinered bungee cord so it shouldn't go anywhere. More tape on the covers, more tape on the covers, more straps on the fairings, cab strap, and uh, we're ready to get out of here. Okay, it is a little bit later and we are a little bit off route because I stopped back by home to see the girls for a bit before I head out to the middle of nowhere. Because uh, I just got back from a two day tow job with this thing and uh, I got back after they went to work at school and then I left to go pick this one up before they got back. So it was kind of on the way where I gotta go. So stop back my home. Uh, screwed that up. Um, added about 45 minutes to my trip here between the going home and the stopping there and then the getting back on route thing, but I'll knock like an hour or so off the, the time for this job and uh, kind of make up for it. Like, I know the load we're going to get like has a timeline is important at all, but the girls are important to her, so we had to make a stop. Well, we are here. That is the one we're picking up right there. That's a tandem axle. We're dropping off a single, but he's got a little trailer, so I guess that's still fine. All right, let's uh, turn on some flashers. The flashers don't flash when my foot's on the brakes, so when I take my foot off the brake, they start flashing. So we will dim down some headlights, turn on some work lights. Now let's go see what we got. Okay, so I walked up the office, got the key to the bad truck here. Um, due to how long it was gonna take me to get out here from when I got the call. Um, I mean, first of all, I had to drive a half hour in the wrong direction. I wonder if it runs, I don't even know. I uh, drive a half hour in the wrong direction, spend a half hour loading up, half hour back to then drive two and a half hours out here. All right, it starts, that's a good sign. Got some lights. Why are you mad? Ooh. Beeping light, I got you. Okay. I just need you to build enough air to pull out of here. So, anyway, what I was saying. Basically, from the time I got the call, the time I was going to get here to swap them out was going to be four or five hours and who knows how long before that before they called me so the driver obviously doesn't have a sleeper truck so by the time i got here to do this he was not going to have enough hours to get to his destination so they got him straight into a hotel room here to go to bed because he's got to do a 10 hour reset that way by the time we get the swapped out he's going to have another four three four hours left on that reset and then he could start a full 11 hour driving day so yeah, uh, my little delay at home wasn't that big of a deal actually because he needed more time anyway. So logistic, kind of a mess, but it's the quickest way to legally get that where it's gotta go. So I'm gonna put you guys on my little chesty deal and then start hooking that trailer. Oh, and by the way, it is a nice uh, 27 degrees out tonight. It's uh, about 8.30 now. Oh, 
course, got to back into it. So we can disconnect this stuff here. Does he have hangers? He does. Perfect. So we'll hang. Come on. Go in your home. You next. Okay, so I got to back into that, take the pressure off the kingpin. So, release tractor only. We have air pressure. Give me some reverse. Okay, neutral. Okay. What the shit? your deal? I'm not missing anything. Or am I? You gotta go forward now? Oh yeah. That's it. It's just I don't know what I'm doing. Come on. What am I missing? Somebody tell me. Why won't this stay open? this okay I'm missing something stupid but since uh, I'm used to being dumb I have figured out ways to work around uh, my incompetence I'm sure someone is gonna tell me the trick to this that I don't know, but that's my trick. Okay, it worked. I'm pulling out of this really easy because that's a short little trailer and if it's loaded in the nose and not in the tail, it can nosedive and like fall on its face and then it goes like face down ass up we don't want to do that i mean to make good video but don't want to do that i'm gonna take the light bar off and uh herbert said like that's what you get for using bungee cords and how dumb are you you thought bungee cords are actually gonna hold that and I knew it was going to fall off as soon as I saw the bungee cords. Well, guess what, genius? These are literally designed to be held on by bungee cords. That's how they come. That's exactly how it's done. And how the vast 99% of the towing industry does it. So, thank you for just proving that you don't know what you're talking about. We're going to... take this out see that was just a safety it's not actually holding the weight i don't like using the seat belt to hold the steering wheel like some people do i don't think it's the right way to do it so okay
We're just gonna leave all this on the ground right here because that truck does drive. So we're gonna leave my wrecker in position and just back that truck up to it instead of the other way around. That was the slowest drag race I've ever seen. Do better. Okay. Come on. Extend out. Now we're gonna set down. I'm gonna use remotes so I can show you. I said I was using the U-bolt cups. Um, it's those there. They, they just call around the U-bolts. I'll do it with this so you can see. Right, look at the one over there. Forgot to dump my air. Let's see how that, how they just go up and grab the U-bolt there. That's what those are designed for. They just call around the U-bolts, strap it down so the U-bolts can't bounce out. Very secure way of doing it. All right, let's take our straps and tape off. So this one was grabbing this main cross member up here and holding the cab down. I drained all the air out of this truck and lowered the, the cab airbag so it couldn't bounce around. Um, show you just a sec here. So the cabs are air ride. There's hinges in the front and there's airbags in the back and they do this. And uh, on the day cabs like this that are so short and that being such a big parachute, the wind can try to push them over and pull the shocks out on the bags right there. So it's not really necessary on the big long sleeper trucks, but on the cab, day cab short ones that have that up there, it helps to hold the cab down so it doesn't blow around or blow over okay i'm gonna use electrical tape on the next one because being so cold out this stuff didn't want to come off very easy electrical tape will be nicer i need to put a garbage can in here okay so so we can clearly see all of our fairings are still in place no damage all of our mirror caps are still in place, no damage. So that's why we tape them and strap them and then only drive 55 miles an hour the whole way. So everything's still there. All right, I'm gonna fire this truck up once I get the keys and go back it over to that trailer. Oh, there was just this massive crowd of people walking across the street and I didn't know what was going on. There's a tour bus over there and there's a restaurant right there. That makes sense. Okay, secondary tank is filled. Primary tank is starting to fill. Why that did it in that order, I don't know. Head over here. Why did the work light turn off? On. Okay, reverse. The work light keeps turning off whenever you move the truck. That makes it very hard to back into something. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is turn the freaking work light back on and I'm going to now dump the air that I just built up. I'm gonna back up. Come on, automatic. There you go. Right to it. We're gonna call that good. I'm not gonna hook it to the trailer. The driver can do that himself so that it's his responsibility. So, lights off. Truck off, lights off. Okay, so this is far enough under. Now the work light stays on, really.
This is far enough under that if this trailer were to try to nosedive for some reason, it can't. The reefer unit's running right there. It's automatic on a thermostat. It's uh, negative three degrees in zone one, 36 degrees in zone two. So it must have a divider in that trailer. Um, negative three, it must have like ice cream and stuff in there. Anyway, um, the trailer can't nosedive, but the driver can clearly see that he's not connected and he needs to do the hookup. So, this truck is much older than that one. So I'm gonna check the fairings over real good to make sure they're all tight and on there and no damage before I rear tow it or I'll just hook it from the front. This is rusty but solid, so everything seems good. So I'll just hook it up the same way. I did notice that it's not running anymore and I left it running. Why are you mad, bro? Alright. Yo. I get it. I understand. Don't worry, I'm not trying to drive you anywhere. Is there a backup light on you? Hey, hey. We got it. Work. Okay. We're gonna back this up. Oh, let me turn here. Okay. We're gonna back this up here into my truck. I'm gonna center it up because we got like no room for error on those U bolts. Boom. Probably good right there. Neutral. Set the brakes. Shut the truck off. Hey. Dude, stop, okay? Get, I get it, just stop. Okay. So, opposite of everything we just did. Okay, now since this one's a tandem axle, we've gotta chain this axle up so it's not hanging. So I'll go grab a chain. Okay, now when we lift this up, you will tilt. See, that's gonna pull tight, just like that, and this axle is now not hanging against the shocks. Otherwise, it's bouncing, hanging all that weight on the shocks, and that's not good for it. Come to me. I'm gonna bring it all the way in and out just enough to turn. Because when that head's all the way in, it can't turn. All right, I'm gonna tie it down and secure it, and then I'll see you after. Okay, we got safety chains. Sheriff just stopped by to make sure everything was going good. Cab is strapped down, so tanks are drained, all the bags deflated. Side fairing strapped. I didn't trust that top fairing as much as I did on the other one, so I put a cross strap on that. Those clamps have rubber pads on the inside so you don't scratch anything up. Mirrors are taped, steering wheel is tied, mirrors are taped, light bars on and good. Tape, 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 straps. This axle is chained up so it's not hanging on it. All good, safeties, two straps, bumped out so we can close up our boxes, take our key to the office. Okay, keys dropped off in the office. It is very quiet here for nine o'clock at night. So we're here for a little over a half hour doing all that swapping around stuff, which that's not too bad. All right, let's uh, spare some fuel. Okay, we're getting our fuel, giving everything a checking over while we're here. Uh, I'm surprised how easy that truck pulled backwards. But I mean, like I said, you're dragging a parachute there, and I averaged 6.4 miles a gallon on the way here and 42% engine load. That's uh, like the total available horsepower, what percentage you're using. It's 450 horsepower, so 42%, I'm sure someone do that math, but it's way too late for me to do it. But uh, that shows how much horsepower it was taken to pull that parachute down the road along with the truck on flat, even ground with cruise control at 55. Uh, if I try to go faster, one, I risk 
fairing damage to uh, it just burns a whole lot more fuel and fuel's expensive so yeah 42% engine load that pulled better than I thought just in time and uh, six and a half miles a gallon I was expecting like in the fours pulling backwards like that so I'm gonna put all this away and uh, west we go Check this out, bumped up to 60 miles an hour on the cruise control. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's dropped down to 5.2 miles per gallon, 4.9 right in that range. And then our engine load factor, 61%. So I just dropped it back down to 55 and uh, our load factor is dropping down into the 40s. Our mileage is gonna be up to 6.4 right there. So that five miles an hour makes that much of a difference. Well, it's not last night anymore. Um, it was really late and I didn't want to come all the way up here last night after being gone for two days already. So I just went home, slept in my own bed, which was really nice. And then uh, slept in a little bit this morning and then uh, now brought this thing up to drop off. So, oh, hey, there's a, uh, that's Robert over there. Consolidated towing. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get this thing unstrapped, unhooked, and set down off of here. You see, all the fairings made it. All the mirror covers made it. Front bumper's still on it. Everything just fine at 55 miles an hour the whole way. It is amazing what a difference that extra five miles an hour makes in this whole parachute right here. And so then not only is that that much extra load that the truck has to pull, that's that much extra force is on all those fairings. So keeping it at 55, huge difference. Okay. Out we go. And now we'll give a little tilt down, boom down. There it is. Bring this in. I gotta pull that chain off the front axle, steering wheel straps, and uh, pull my tape off. All done the truck is parked good to go and we are put away could head out of here uh, everything went as smooth as could be there was nothing crazy happened nothing out of the ordinary which is exactly what we hoped for doesn't make the best videos but makes the best business so uh, I'm gonna head out of here and on to the next thing even though I don't know what that is yet we'll see you guys next time